My whole career I've worked in the construction industry and when I started it was predominantly architectural based and I really loved that, I really enjoyed the process. But as I've progressed through my career, I've found myself more involved with infrastructure and civil engineering projects, which I find for me personally much more rewarding and more enjoyable. The complexities and the variables involved really are something that we can bring back to, to our society and leave a lasting legacy. So I really enjoy that. It's really important to acknowledge that the last few years have seen a, a global rise in, in the use of technologies and digital processes, but it's been around a lot longer. Uh, and I think only now we get into the point where we're understanding the benefit of technology uh, and, and digital tools and digital processes and how we can manage information collaboratively. Uh, I think it's crucial that we start to listen to the requirements of our clients, listen to the requirements of how we manage and operate the assets, be it a building or infrastructure, um, and start to leverage the benefits that technology can bring to processes like this. I heard a wonderful comment this morning. Um, somebody said there's a, there's a huge lack of common sense when it comes to, to projects. There's an overcomplication of, of adding digital processes to uh, projects, be it an infrastructure or, or building uh, outcome. And I think, you know, understanding the basics, of what the clients are asking for, what the project requirements are and working back and establishing that common, common set of objectives, those common goals. I think you have to look at the word mandatory and, and almost take that away and look at what the basics are. Often when we start projects, there, there's a, a lack of understanding in terms of how we're supposed to deliver these, these, these projects. If we don't have the right skills in place for our people, uh, often the projects will fall over. Now, we're, we're about to enter a, a precipice of uh, skill shortage. And this is the perfect opportunity to start to engage and upskill people from you know, grassroots right through to boardroom level to bring them up to speed on what digital tools and processes can do in this environment. I think leaving a legacy is really important now. Um, I've, I've always enjoyed showing my, my family, my children, the work that I've contributed to in my, in my career to date. And I think now that technologies are much more prevalent and prominent uh, ingredient to the way we deliver construction projects, I think that's going to be really instrumental in, in showing future generations what we can do and what the art of the possible is to leave a much better legacy. I think BIM should become the norm. Information management, digital tools, they should become the normal way we do things. Businesses are further advanced than other businesses so they can offer better solutions to customers and clients. I think the reality is, is yes, there's a competitive advantage. The difference between say now and five years ago is, is clients are much more educated, much more informed around what the benefits could be for them, what their assets will be, what their assets will perform like. And that that's where the competition should really be focusing on is what our customers want. Well, I don't think two years ago we, we could predict just how much we would come to rely on technology as a society globally. And I think that's really changed the baseline as to how we operate and communicate and share information. I think if you're looking at a transformation piece um, or, or digital maturity, uh, you really have to sort of look backwards in order to go forwards. You know, what have we done? Where have we come from? You know, where do we want to go? Uh, and they often help define that roadmap going forwards. So in two years, three years, four years, five years, we'll be in a much better position to address and deal with the changes and challenges that are being um, presented to us. One of the biggest challenges we have with sustainability is it's not just um, a simple exercise. It's not a tick box process. You have to ask questions from the very beginning right through to the very end of what you're trying to achieve. And if we don't address that now, we're gonna have some serious problems and questions to, to answer and face in, in, in the future. So I think you, you have to really uh, start to embed that, that, that process, that thought process now. I do have hobbies. Um, I do, I do when, when, when spare time um, is permitted and when we're, it's available, um, I like to go and travel and explore new places with, with my family. Um, I like to you know, show my children parts of the world that they've never been to before and, and learn and understand about you know, the places, the cultures, the history, and try and educate them as they grow. Um, 
and just generally spending time away from work, I think, just disconnecting from that digital landscape and just reverting to who you are. Mm -hmm.